Hello friends, this is Shannon Coates from The Vocal Instrument 101 and I'm just realizing that like <laughs> I'm a little shiny. Woo! I think I can fix that. Hold on a second. Let's see what happens if I Woo! Take that shine down a little. It's not my makeup, it's my lighting, you know. Oh, see that's a little better there. I think. Yeah, not quite as shiny. Still a little shiny. Sorry about that. Let's see maybe I can take it down a little farther. Woo! Okay. That's better, sort of. Woo, I'll just stay away from the camera. I don't know. Anyway, hi, Aubrey. Just uh, adjusting my light while I just wait for people to come in here, you know, found my light, now I gotta adjust it. Anyway, um, good evening here in Eastern Standard Time. We are, yeah, we're around 9.30, I think. Anyway, um, Shannon Coates here. I thought that I would like to come into the Vocal Instrument 101 today and talk to you a little bit about ways to get a voice pedagogy education or to learn some voice pedagogy stuff without picking up a voice pedagogy text. And why would I be talking about this? Especially someone like me who happens to have a doctorate and in fact, my doctorate in my doctorate for my paper for my actual thesis i read i i did a whole uh a literature review of breathing for singing terminology so i read a whole lot of books <laughs> for that and i have done quite a bit of pedagogy reading voice ped and i have a lot of voice ped books on my shelf lots and lots and lots and so why would I be uh, coming into the, you know, the world here and saying, hey, you can do voice ped without reading a voice ped text, I promise. And in fact, not only am I saying you can do it, I'm saying here are eight ways to do it, to get some good voice ped uh, without, prove it, yeah, I'm gonna prove it, neat. Uh, here's some good, here's some, here are eight ways to do it without ever picking up a voice ped text. Um, part of the reason that I am doing this is because there is a weird should around learning voice pedagogy and I should read a textbook. So I don't know enough about blah blah blah, so I should read a textbook. And you're not necessarily wrong by saying that, of course. But not everyone learns well from reading. Friends, this is a thing. Not everyone learns well from reading. Not everyone enjoys reading. I prefer to learn in other ways. I, me, with my doctorate in basically reading voice pedagogy textbooks, <laughs> that thing, I prefer to learn in other ways. I would rather get my information in a whole bunch of other ways than by reading a textbook. There are lots of people out there who prefer to get their textbook, read it, underline, find all the things and do all the things and turn the concepts around in their heads and really deeply understand them and that is fantastic and we need those people in this world. I am not one of those people. And I just want to take away the stigma about not being one of those people. Friends, if you're not one of those people, that's totes fine. You can still learn all the things. You just, and I promise you don't have to do it by picking up a textbook. So here are eight ways that you can learn or become a better voice pedagogy person um, and understand a little bit more about teaching and about voice pedagogy without picking up a textbook. Here's number one. And I think there are more than this. These are just the things that I threw off the top of my head. So here we go. Uh, one, you can go to YouTube. I know, it seems like so ridiculous, right? But here's the thing, there are some really reputable, fabulous, fabulous, knowledgeable people who have read the textbooks <laughs> on YouTube. Karen O'Connor from SingWise is on YouTube. Dr. Dan from Australia. I don't, know, I don't know what, Dr. Dan, I don't know what your thing is, but he's fantastic. And 
if you are a visual learner who enjoys getting information in like 10, 15 minute chunks explained to you, and in Dr. Dan's case, explained to you with like graphics and music and lots of other fancy stuff, go to YouTube. The trick here is to make sure that you're learning from someone reputable. That is the only trick. If you can find someone who knows what they're talking about, learn that way. There's no shame in that. They read the textbooks so that they can give you the information. That's fantastic. That's just smart as far as I'm concerned. Okay, another way to learn if you like to um, have uh, information audibly without any visual or say you do a lot of driving I don't know or I don't know something where you can listen and you don't need to and, and you don't want to watch is um, podcasts seriously there are some fabulous folks out there doing really fabulous podcasts so John Henney has a great podcast that I listen to pretty regularly um, Naked Vocalist is out there doing a podcast uh, great great podcast the Full Voice podcast is fan freaking tastic Shout out to my peeps, um, Nikki, fantastic. So listen to a podcast. Again, someone else has done all the work of reading those textbooks and they are distilling the information and giving it to you in a way that you love to learn. There's nothing wrong with that. There's no shame, take away the stigma. Okay, I've got another one here, let me see. Oh, online forums, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> online forums can be, a bloodbath. I totally get that. <laughs> and for lots of people, this is not the way to learn. And that's totally fine. However, you know what? The people who wrote those textbooks that you're supposed to read, so many of them are on the online forums. So you know what? Go to like professional voice teacher or whatever, or new professional voice teachers and blah, all that stuff. You can go to one of those. And if you search for Ken Bozeman on like professional voice teacher forum on Facebook, if you search for him and just look at all of his answers to like every question that's been put up there, you will learn a lot. <laughs> that man is a genius with words. So, and with explaining really tricky topics. And also he's friggin' nice to boot, like he's the nicest guy. So that is one way that you can learn. You don't have to like actually go into the forum and like do stuff in there if you don't want to, if it's, if it's not working for you, that's totally fine. Also, there are some less like bloodbath forums out there. So, um, the the voice teachers for young singers if you teach young singers the voice teachers for young singers forum is lovely there's it's yeah there's generally not like the same kind of like oh please don't hurt me kind of thing and going on in there anyway yes so that's another one another one is to attend classes and workshops if you like learning from people as they're doing the thing and watching what they're doing go to go to workshops go to master classes Dude, there are tons of them out there. Or look at them online. Again, hello YouTube, thank you YouTube. Lots of master classes and workshops out there. And um, the, uh, I know the, the university that I happen to uh, work at and that I am close to, that university uh, that I teach a class at, um, that university offers free master classes um, all the time, like all through the year. So all you have to do is look online and find the master classes. Now, the university setting, the academic setting tends to be pretty classically uh, based. So if that's your jam, you're gonna learn a lot there. You may not learn what you need to learn about singing like seven-year-olds Annie. So you may not learn that there, but whatever. Um, master classes and workshops. Find them, you can do them. And private uh, independent studios often offer master classes and workshops. I do that myself in my own uh, studio in Toronto. I, I offer at least two workshops per year on different subjects and I bring in an expert. So keep your eyes peeled for what teachers around you are doing. Or maybe if you wanna learn about something and there's somebody fabulous like that you can bring in, do it, do it. And then you get to do the thing, you get to learn the thing in the way that works for you for roughly the same cost as buying a textbook. <laughs> dude, it's a no brainer. Okay, I'm gonna stop saying dude soon. Uh, conferences. 
I friggin' love conferences. I know that conferences are not the thing for everybody. I know that. I am a total extrovert and I get energized by being around people. The first conference that I went to, first voice conference I went to, the um, people were saying to me like, all the time, oh, you're gonna be so exhausted. You're just gonna be like, it's like the information is gonna be overwhelming and blah, blah, blah. And I, I, at the end of the like four days, I was like, that was amazing. How do I do more? Bring it on. Like it, conferences are like my favorite thing. So here's what I love, 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 love about conferences. Someone else has done all the work all the research, written the books, done the paper, done the thing, and then they're distilling the information that they got from that into like a 10, 15, 20, whatever minute talk. You can get all the goods from their work in like 15 minutes and download it. Ah, <laughs> don't have to do any of the work. Dude, it's my favorite thing. Plus, you get to do it with all lots of other people around you. So honestly, I know, doesn't appeal to everyone. <laughs> so appeals to me. So for me, I'm willing to go to a conference. And often I speak at conferences too. I often like, you know, put in my little thing to speak at a conference too. But I'll go to a conference because I love to learn the things from the people and I don't have to read the textbook. And again, often the people who are writing the textbooks are giving presentations at the conferences. You can get the information distilled in like 15 minutes. It's a good deal. <laughs> All right. Um, again, the main thing is to make sure that you are getting to the conference that is going to give you the information that you want. So a Nats conference, for example, is likely going to give you more teaching information and how-to teaching information than, say, the Voice Foundation conference. The Voice Foundation conference, oh, fabulous, oh, kills me every time. But that conference is likely going to give you, it will give you more uh, information around therapy and medical um a voice and that kind of thing so but there are lots of great conferences out there you just have to figure out which one works for you all right that's that and that's that let's see what else do i have here oh yeah online classes are you the kind of person who prefers to do your learning uh one-on-one -on -one with a person that you can like go back and forth and you can listen to it go back and listen to it or and you can um do it all at your own pace and are you internally motivated to keep going in a course then get an online course i happen to have one I know. It's amazing. Just hold off on buying it if you haven't already because one year anniversary is coming up so there's going to be a little sale sale going on in there. So hold on. Yes, online classes, right Nate? So there are there are lots of great classes out there and again, this isn't about this is about finding a reputable source. If you can find someone who knows what they're talking about and who has distilled that information and that's a that's the way that you love to learn it's a no-brainer buy the course it's a no-brainer yes I know I know I'm kind of talking about my own course here but seriously it's a no-brainer if that's the way you learn how many hours oh hey my lights just did something crazy there I don't know what's going on anyway it's all good you can still see me right yeah oh and I'm not a shiny so that's yeah, all good all right um in-person courses, of course. There are lots of in-person courses that you can do. And again, this make sure that you're going somewhere reputable and that the information that the course is giving you is the information that you want. Shenandoah is a great example of this. Jeannie Lovitri, of course, has her uh, uh, courses um, in uh, Jillian Keys uh, at Vocal Process. Oh gosh, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Sorry. Um, in, in England uh, has some fabulous teacher training uh, things there. Uh, there are lots of fantastic teacher training things. Oh, Mary Beth Dame has an online course. You can buy her course. You can buy Mary Beth Dame's course. And honestly, then you don't have to read her textbooks. <laughs> no brainer. <laughs> Sorry. Mm, I'm going to stop talking about this soon. Um, what's another one? Oh yeah. This is number eight. <laughs> if anybody's been keeping watch at home, if you've been counting on your fingers at home, this is number eight, just so you know. Um, if you are the kind of person who loves to learn and prefers to learn by um, observing someone else learn and being able to interact within that learning, 
talk to someone who you really uh, respect and ask if they will let you do an open studio with them. Will they let you uh, observe them teaching and will they observe you teaching? Um, uh, lots of reciprocity, reciprocity reciprocity oh gosh I don't know how to say that word but you can go back and forth that way you can find someone um, I I offer this as part of something that I offer as well is you can um, watch me teach you can come and watch me teach and you can choose the level of student and the kind of uh, lessons that they do and you can do that through zoom I'm sure that if there is a teacher out there that you really respect and you would love to learn more from that they would love to have you watch them. Uh, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I love it because that's the kind of person I am. So I'm like, yeah, everybody, the more the merrier. Everybody watch. So that's the, you can watch that and you can, um, uh, I have a system where you, we do a little debrief afterwards and we uh, discuss anything that came up in the session and blah, blah, blah. Um, you can do that for with a teacher you respect or just go and take lessons with them. You can do it on Zoom, it's so easy now. Or go and, and, or send them a video. I mean, obviously ask them first if they're willing to do this, but send them a video of you teaching and do a discussion over what are some of the things that I can do better? How can I improve my teaching here? How is my language here? How is my blah, 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 whatever. Okay, those are eight things that you can do to be a better voice teacher to have better voice pedagogy without ever picking up a textbook. If you are the kind of person who loves to comb through textbooks and wants to read all the things, you go do that thing. You do that thing. I am not that person and I love to learn in a group or whatever, so I have found all the things that I love to do. So I go to conferences, because I love to learn that way. It's my favorite thing. And I actually also enjoy, I actually enjoy reading through the online forums, and, in, and for me, like interacting in online forums and being able to offer something in an online forum, but also, like I said, I will sometimes just Google or just search for it like Ken Bozeman and just read all of his comments because I can learn so much. <laughs> it's fabulous. <laughs> anyway, those are eight things you can do, okay? Remove the stigma. Also take the shoulds off your back. So if you feel like you should have read a voice pedagogy textbook to figure out what to do, or may just take that off your back, because maybe what you could do is go ask somebody about it, or I don't know, go find an article somewhere, or look at a YouTube video about it, or listen to a podcast about it. John Henney has some fabulous podcasts about mixing out there. Just really fantastic podcasts where he really breaks down really con like convoluted concepts into nice, clean ideas. So do it. Do that thing. Okay? I'm out. Good night. <laughs>